Okay. Um, so I'll just take you through like how I would, um, you know, chop up a bunch of stems and automate drums to change and things like that. So I've got this, this beat that I made appropriately titled little beat and I'll just drag these stems in. And this is kind of, um, how I would start a song. Usually I'll get a bunch of stems and I'll, I'll put them in. Um, if you hold command in Ableton, then it'll put them onto a bunch of different tracks, which is what we want. If not, then it, it puts them all into one track. Great. So I'm going to drag this in, put them on all different tracks, line them up on the one. Um, and this happens to be at 92. So that's what I'm going to put the tempo in there. Yes. Know your tempo kids. Yeah. Um, so normally like if I had stems for an entire song, I would have a bunch of groups. I would group all the stems into like bass and synths and vocals and whatever. And that's just mostly for practicing purposes, you know, like if I want to, so like, for example, I'll do that here, Apple G group and Apple R rename that drum. So here are our drums and I can assign the track color to group tracks and click clips. Drums are always red. I'm a maniac like that. <laughs> um, so, Is there a story behind that? You know, I don't, I think the first time I made a drum rack, it happened to be red. So now drum racks are always red. Uh -huh. Drums in general. I get it. Um, and I think it's just visually like that's what I'm focusing on. So sure. it pops. Um, but, you know, normally like you might have some other tracks which you make more tracks with Apple T and like, you know, this might be synths and like Apple G group, Apple R rename vocals, you know? So like, this is just useful when you're practicing. Like, um, if you want to be able to, you know, you can mute all the drums or you could mute certain parts that you know are going to be played. So you're not playing along to, you know, the tracks sound like what they're going to sound like in rehearsal or on yeah. the gig. Same thing with the vocals. A lot of times it's really useful to be able to mute the vocal because, um, when you're practicing, like you definitely want to come into rehearsal or to the gig, being able to play the tune without the vocals. I've made that mistake so many times. You're so used to these, like, uh, you don't realize the cues you're you're banking on, but they're not there. She sings it differently, or it's yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Vocalist forgets a, a lyric, or yep. you know, or, or they sing something differently, or they want to change something, or sections get changed, and you're relying on the vocal cues. Like you don't want to do that. So yep. this is I just set up my practice sort of sessions like I would, like a playback session. You know, it's just so that you can change whatever you need. You can double stuff. Um, yeah, so that's how I would do it. And then drums normally I would just put at the bottom for whatever reason. Um, so here are our drum stems and I'll just play this beat. Pretty simple. And then at the end there's this other some other parts that come in. So, you know, obviously in rehearsal, if you were given a, a bunch of stems like this to learn in rehearsal, you, you, things might change. You might play them differently. This kick, you know, these 808s might end up in the track. The kick might be a acoustic kick. You know, you come in and it's like you have your thing prepared and then you leave it all at the door and you're just ready to throw it all out if you have to, mm -hmm. Yep. you know, um, and that's fine. But what I like to do is come in with the most electronic like close to the record version that i can just because everything has to be chopped out all the automation has to be in place you know things have to be leveled like you can't really you can go from this to a more acoustic version or to something else but it's really hard to go to this version in rehearsal because it just takes a lot of time you kind of just sit you know loop things make sure the automation is right yeah, yeah. check it so so I'll just start here. Um, I'm going to make a drum rack track, Apple Shift T, to create a new MIDI track. Apple R, rename it, drum rack. And now it's just a MIDI track, so I have to put a drum rack on it. That's over here. Drag our drum rack. Just right on, okay. Just right onto the, onto the MIDI track. 
so now we have a drum rack and um you know it's basically here are the four by four squares and you can um you've got all these slots that you have to work with if you wanted to so basically the way i lay out a drum rack is kind of mirroring what my physical setup looks like mm -hmm. so if i were c using this to control an spd or i was using an spd to control this i would probably put my samples in this three by three box okay like an spd has um with billy i've got three pads um, on my right and then i've got a kick pedal and i have another pad on my left so this is kind of how i arrange them like this is the pad on my left these are the three pads um on my right and there's the kick pedal on my lower right you know what i mean that's cool it kind of looks like and it's just easy like when i'm editing things i don't have to think about okay this is note a1 so that's this pad you know it just yeah looks like what it is um so here's our drum rack and i'll just start chopping out the samples like i would for a song so do you start at a certain spot on the drum rack or is it i mean does 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 that matter like uh on the on this little sky over here mm -hmm. um no i think i actually just leave it at default okay whatever cool. the default is um that's where i started it doesn't really matter most modules you can change whatever note it sends okay so um yeah i've never had use for like more than two little you know sets of squares yeah okay um Okay, so Apple E is to chop something. So I'm going to Apple E chop out these 808s. There's only three of them in the whole stem, so they're all the same. Um, sets of three. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to drag it to a drum rack, the drum rack. So now there's the first 808. Always go velocity zero, volume zero. Um, because most of the time in these sorts of sample based productions, there's not a ton of velocity on the samples I've found. Sometimes there is, mm -hmm. you know, on occasion you'll have a sample that's got some dynamics to it. And then you're going to have to go over here and, um, dial in like while you're hitting the pad, like how much, how, um, what the dynamic range is, but usually there's no, um, velocity changes and the volume zero that just means that it's at the same level as the stem is mm -hmm. whatever the level is. I'm not sure why, but the default is negative 12, maybe so that, you know, you don't drag things into drum racks and it's like blasting your head off with velocity. Yeah. 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 Um, so velocity at zero, would that be the same as having just the dynamics off on the SPDSX? Exactly. Okay, cool. Same thing. A lot of people do that setting yeah. as well. I first thing I do. Yeah. Yep. So, so now we have our aid weight over here and I know that I'm going to try to put, all these things on the kick pedal. That's what makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I want to play an 808 with a kick pedal. So if my kick pedal is this little square, I'm going to want all three of those 808s on the same pad. So what I can do is select, this is called a simpler device. Ableton has, is another device in Ableton. There's sampler and simpler. Simpler is the easier version of sampler. <laughs> so you know, witty. Brilliant. Yeah. I love <laughs> musician puns. Uh, um, and this is what the sa they load the sample into. And you can see, actually, when you drag a sample here um, from the stem, it lo actually loads the entire stem. Oh, and that's it, convenient. And just, it just has the region chopped out, which is really nice. And this is, um, I found this useful. Some people export their samples from the stem, and then they reload them into a drum rack. That's great if you need, like, a folder of the samples for use in other, whatever, you know, other situations. Or you, so you have them all in one place. But I just prefer to drag them right there. You know, whatever works for your workflow. Yeah. So anyway, I can take this um, this simpler device, and if I select it and go Apple G, it's going to create an instrument rack on the pad. And if I rename it, I'm going to rename it KT10 because that's the the name of the pedal that I use mm -hmm. this with. It also renames the pad there. So this is going to be the KT10. Now I can take all these other samples and just drag them straight into the instrument rack so now i've got all three of the 808s there um and i think we talked about this before but an instrument rack is basically just you know a list of instruments in this case it, they're simpler devices um 
it could be drum racks, it could be samplers, it could be whatever. It's just sort of a utility thing. Yeah. So now I want all our settings to match. So we're going to go to one shot mode, no filters, no LFOs, velocity zero, volume zero. Filter off, LFO off. There we go. Um, so the next thing is, so here we go. Here's the first, here's the first 808. You can see it selected. Second 808, third 808. I find this thing really convenient in situations like this too, where you've got a bunch of samples that are chopped from the same stem. You can, if they're dragged straight from the stem, you can really, you can just see where they are. You can tell what they are. You don't have to hear them. So that's nice. The um, only advantage to having them export them, then bring them back in, is just, like you said, just to have them in a folder that are just there if you want to share them and stuff. And yeah, you want to, you know, whatever you have some other use for them, or you mm -hmm. know, you want to load them into a module or whatever. I mean, that's fine. That's like a totally like great workflow. I've done it myself, mm -hmm. but um, you know, whatever works for you. Um, so the next thing is is the chain selector. So this is the chain selector, and basically this blue bar chooses which chain the MIDI is going to go to. So if I change, so right now, let's undo that right now, the blue bar, all of these things are in the same chain mm -hmm. and the blue bar is sending MIDI to all three chains. The chain so, is vertical. Right. Yeah. So if I hit this, it's going to play them all at the same time. I'm not going to do that. It might be kind of loud. <laughs> But what I'm going to do is move them to different chains. I like my chains to start at one um, instead of zero, which is default. I don't know why. That's another maniac like OCD thing. I just, whatever. It's working for you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I start all the chains at one. So now this, now we're in the first one. If I move it over here, that's the second 808 and the third one. So you could map a knob actually to this and just change it manually, but I'm going to automate it so that it changes throughout the track. So any parameter in Ableton that can be automated, if you right click and either show automation or show automation in a new lane, um, it displays the automation. So I'm going to show automation in a new lane and I don't want to see it there. And I'm actually just going to move the drum rack up to directly beneath these 808s. So we can, we can really compare. So here we are. So we want to start with chain value one, which is where it currently is. And then here's the automation line. So, so this I, one starts off at one, not zero. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Here we are at one. That's automation. Great. Lane one. Um, and if I move to where I've automated it to two, it'll go to the second 808. So we're just going to do that in time with this 808 kick baseline and it'll change as we need it to. So before the, the second one, we're going to go to two and before the third one, we're going to go to three. And if you move it before the actual attack of that hit, will it still let that sound kind of release fully? Yes, exactly. Cool. So you're not changing anything about the behavior of the device. You're just changing where the next MIDI note is going to go. Okay. So it's not going to turn it off. And that this is really useful. I've run into this for like, you know, things with long reverb tails or any kind of tail, like an 808. Yeah. You know, you can change it b before the next downbeat and you're good. That's great. So, um, if we, if we let this play, you'll watch, you can see it change here as our automation line changes. Oh, that's sick. Back to one. Right. So now, and since the baseline is the same the whole time, we can just select that and duplicate it over Apple D. And then we're done. Now our 808s, you just play that rhythm and the 808s will change um, with, the, with the automation. And I'm actually going to make a MIDI clip to play that for us so if i do it'll see. be a virtual you essentially exactly and this is good for just auditioning stuff so you don't have to play it you know um 
And while he's setting that up, this is what we were talking about in the first part of the uh, episode of having one pad change throughout the song. I think he's, I mean, he's, he's talked about it, but just to clarify, um, yeah, you don't have to have a different pad for every, every sound for that song. Yeah. It's really useful and it just makes it like feel like drums, you know? Yeah. Like you're not thinking about all this choreography and you're just, um, you know, just, you just less compromise. Play. Exactly. So I'm going to copy that over. Hopefully that's all in time and cool. Let's see. Let's see if this works. I'm going to, I can solo this, uh, monitor auto. Yeah. So now our MIDI clip is just playing this pad like you would with your pedal. Okay. So theoretically you could, uh, mute that audio track and just let the, that MIDI play instead of that audio track and it should sound like the song, right? Exactly. Actually, that is what's happening. The, the MIDI track is soloed currently. Oh, cool. So that is just the MIDI track. And you couldn't tell, see, that's good. That's great. Yeah. That's the goal. <laughs> that's totally the goal. Um, you know, in these situations, you know, you want to, sometimes you want to sound like the track or if you want to go, you know, take a whiz halfway through a show, just turn exactly. on the MIDI, you know? turn on your MIDI clips. You're good to go. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. We've got some other samples happening here. There's a clap. I'm going to take that clap. Um, Apple E. And then there's this ankle bell thing. So I'm going to take that too. Now, you could put these on two different pads, but I know that later there's some hats that come in, which are going to be, I'm going to play that with my right hand. Mm-hmm. So probably I'm going to have to play these both with one hand. Sure. I'm not going to have a free hand. So we're going to do some, some more instrument rack automation here. Um, we we'll drag this onto a pad. Let's, let's say I've got like my Billy set up. I've got three pads, um, in this one where I'm actually only gonna have to use two, but I'm going to put this on my leftmost pad. I'm going to okay. play with my left hand. Um, and then I'm going to Apple G, make an instrument rack, and we'll call this pad one. Um, and then we'll take the ankle bell and put it over there. So there's a couple ways to do this type of automation. Basically what I want is I want most of the time to be able to play the clap alone. And then sometimes on actually on beat four specifically, the ankle bell to get layered on top of it. Okay. Um, now you can, here's a parameter you can automate to accomplish this, which is the, the chain on off. It's like a little speaker mm -hmm. that mutes the chain. Basically the thing with this is that what's going to happen is what we were talking about earlier, where if you turn it off, it's going to cut off the reverb tail or okay. whatever kind of tail of the sample that's happening. It's going to turn the sampler off. And this ankle bell has a bit of a, you know, kind of a nice tail to yeah. it. So I'm actually going to do this with chain selector automation too. I'm going to make a chain that has just the clap. See, these regions can be dragged yep. out to layer things, um, to play multiple things at one time That's or whatever. Great. So this chain, number one has just the clap and chain number two has the clap with the ankle bell on it. And can you have gaps in that? Um, like, you know, I no. the okay. short answer is no, I, you can't Just copy and paste it and have another one down there that starts later. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of, there's like, yeah, I kind of have to do a workaround for that, yeah, sure. but you can't like take a region out of this. Mm -hmm. I've had to get creatives all, too. Also, like after I've drawn, I've drawn a whole bunch of automation and I have to add something later. Things have to get edited a lot, you know, it's a lot yeah, of sure. trial and error, but for this purpose, this is what I would do here. Well, you have a lot of time on the planes yeah, <laughs> to exactly. work on. Oh, <laughs> so much automation on planes. It's yes. Like yes. Constant. <laughs> So again, velocity zero, volume zero, um, one shot mode. All your stuff should be in one shot mode. These are different sampling modes, you know, Okay. classic. You can like loop the sample and yeah, everything you've done. I mean, you're, you're going back and forth right now, but everything you've done so far has just been the default and you've otherwise explained it if you change something. So someone going around them just opening up simpler or that stuff is just, it would look the same as with you're opening it up right now, right? Exactly. Okay, okay, cool. These are all just default settings. You yep, know, great. turn these filters and 
LFO is off and whatnot. Um, pretty straightforward. And, uh, and one other thing worth noting is I'm currently chopping on the bar line, which, you know, generally is good if stuff is quantized. So like our, our stuff looks good here. It's kind of, it's on the, the zero crossing it's called where mm -hmm. you're not, um, chopping in the middle of a waveform. You know, if you have that, you'll get pops and clicks and stuff. Yeah. So because all these things are quantized and they were made on the bar line, it's fine to shop on the bar line. Sometimes you have to get in there and make sure your stuff is chopped incorrect, chopped correctly. If you know, it was played in or if it's not exactly quantized or whatever. Yeah. And usually I'll do this anyway for every sample just to make sure we're cool. Um, okay. So we have our two chains, uh, one and two with and without the ankle ankle bells. And then I'll just right click display this automation and we'll draw that in. So, um, we want just the claps beats one through three, and then we add the bell on beat four. So we're going to be in, um, chain number one, most of the time. And we just get number two on beat four. So let's see here. Make that happen. change here and then back so there we go we get two and you can see it's like sort of right before this beat four mm -hmm. move it over a little bit just for you know safety yeah but it's real tight like it it really works well you can get right up behind that beat and it'll you'll be fine which is really nice i've done some really tight automations where i've where I'm getting things in increments of like 16th notes is sure, crazy. Sure. Um, and then I have all the way till this beat to get back to one. So we'll just put it sort of in the middle there. And it's just, um, I guess actually if I, if I put it behind beat one, then we can just copy the one bar. So that's our automation for that bar. And we can just copy it over. I don't want to take those MIDI notes. Uh, maybe it will. And while you're doing this, uh, how much CPU does this kind of take up? Is this relatively low in the overall usage? This is pretty low. Okay. Yeah. I mean, our CPU is hovering at 2% right now. Um, if I play something and let the automation run, we go up to 4 or 5 Oh, wow. It's super low. Percent. And most of my stuff doesn't really get too much higher than that. You know, it's, they're all like short drum samples mm -hmm. and you know chain selector automation it's nothing crazy if you're playing a soft synth then you'd be at like 30 percent or whatever yeah yeah um but however you know you always want to like minimize your impact on the especially if this is running from a playback session which is you know which is what i do with billy and which c takes some finessing to make sure you're not messing with the tracks sure but actually it's probably a good opportunity to discuss this you can also automate the on off button on this drum rack so what i normally do is i only turn it on during the song that it's meant for so like if i select the length of the song mouse down to its automation lane then i can select the whole lane or the whole um line that's the length of the song mm -hmm. and just turn it on for that song so now it's on and as this, as soon as the song ends it turns off oh that's great so when it's on, it's taking CPU. I th it's so minimal that you might not really even see it. Uh, it's the kind of hovering at two or one. If I had more stuff in it, you would sure, notice, yeah, yeah. you'd notice more. But um, when it's on, it's using CPU just by being on. Great. Especially if you've got you know a whole bunch of drum racks, a whole bunch of things. You want everything off when you don't you don't need it. Totally. Um. How's our time? We're, uh, at, we're at 2434. Hmm. Which is great. I mean, yeah, there's no, uh, this is great. Okay. I'll keep going. Yeah. All right. Um, so anyway, so, uh, we've automated the device to turn on only when we need it. That's really useful. Um, and we've done the, the clap and ankle bell automation thing so the next thing we get these hats and the kick at the same time um so 
like we did before. I'm gonna chop out the the hats, Apple A, Apple E rather. Um, and I'm just gonna drag them to another pad. And that's, uh, that's just like that. I don't need to make an instrument rack for this one because it's the only sample that's going to go on this pad. Mm -hmm. You know, no use having devices that you're not using. Like if I, if I made this an instrument rack and I called it pad two and it just had, well, it just had the one thing in it. Now I've got an extra device that I don't really need. Yeah. If there was like a, like a touch, touch, mm -hmm. then it'd be cool. Then you could just do the three hits, put it open. But in this case, it's just one sound. Right. Just the one, and you know, the leaner the session, the better in a playback context. It's this is Hollywood, so yeah, the skinnier the better. <laughs> exactly, totally. You <laughs> want to, you know, keep it lean. Yeah. So I'm just gonna undo all this. I'm just gonna have the hats right on that pad, and of course there are songs where all three of these pads are instrument racks, and this one too, and the KT10, mm -hmm. um, and I've got five instrument racks nested within a drum rack, but you know, if you don't need to, don't do it. Just yeah. keep it simple. So hats are there, hats are done. Now, how do we play? This is, you know, this is kind of the deep level nerd that I love to do. How do we play this kick with the 808s at the same time? And again, in, once you get into rehearsal, is that really going to happen with a beat like this? Who knows? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. But you kind of want to come, I personally want to come in with it ready to go so we can hear it and be like, nah, I kind of want to hear it like a, an acoustic kick in the chorus let's just put the 808s in the track sure or put the 808s on the trigger or whatever you know whatever you want to do so i'm going to drag this kick up to the 808 zone so we can see them both at the same time and also our drum rack oh i forgot to make midi midi notes for that um ankle bell thing let me just do that real quick um let's see pad one um, we can hit it on beat four so let me just duplicate. And I was wrong. We actually hit it on two and four, obviously, because this is what we do. So I'm just going to grab this bar. Uh, nope. I just want these things. There we go. We're doing it live. <laughs> Apple D for duplicate. Cool, cool. Let's see if this one works. There we go. Perfect, man. Nice. Um, and again, this MIDI track is soloed. So that's just the drum rack that you're hearing, as if you were just playing it. Um, okay, so back to where we were with these kicks. So again, just um, a two-bar phrase. So what we need is, we need the kick with the 808 together, the first 808, we need it with the second 808. We don't need it with the third 808 because it doesn't happen at the same time. But we also need it alone. So how are we gonna play these two parts at the same time? Um, here's a case. First, let me chop out the kick. So we have it in our drum rack, Apple E. And then I'm gonna and try- And all these kicks are the exact same, right? All these kicks are the same. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if they weren't, you'd need more automation for that, <laughs> but, and that's fine. It's doable, Yeah, but they're all just the same. So we're going to drag it onto our 808 rack. So we need it alone. We need it with one and we need it with two. So we could accomplish that this way, but then we're starting at zero, which, you know, I don't love. So actually I'm going to move all these up one. I'm going to show this automation. I'm going to move these up one chain, two, three, four, and then we're going to select that whole line and just move it up one. So, okay. Yeah. We can select, we can select this, the entire song, grab that line. If you, you know, there's, there's multiple ways to draw automation. You can grab a whole line. Now it's all selected blue 
It's all highlighted in blue. Or we can just make a point. I'm mm-hmm. going to grab the whole line and I'm going to shift it up one. So now it's the same. Okay. But, yep. But our chains have changed, which is useful when this happens. You know, sometimes you start a song and then you get another sample and you're like, oh, I need more chains at the beginning. Yeah, that's super whatever. easy to do. Yeah. So now we have chain one is our kick alone. Chain two is the kick with the first 808. Um, chain three, if I drag that out, is the kick with the second 808. And then chain four is the third 808 alone. So now what we want to do is just get in here and draw our automation. Luckily, we only have one bar of it to do. so. But of course, there are situations where you're automating. You're getting into an entire verse or entire chorus. And, mm-hmm. um, so on beat one, we have 808.1 and the kick together. That's okay. where it already is. And then same thing with, I guess that's the and of two. 808 number two with the kick. That's cool. That's where we're at there. Then we need the kick alone. So after this note, we got to go down to one. Right. Yeah, this is this is very intuitive, actually. Yeah, it makes sense, you know, once you get into it. Now we have the kick alone right there in this spot. And then we got to go back up to just the 808 by itself. The third 808, which is what we have already there. And so you're going to end up playing more bass drums than just that. That uh, what, what's what's the track called that has just like the more acoustic sounding kick? Little beat kick. Little beat kick. Yeah. So you'll actually have to play that 808 right after those two little beat kicks, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You're playing two stems at the same time. <laughs> so you. And play. if you wanted to, you could automate it to where you're playing those 808s, but the second the other drum, bass drum comes in, then you can automate MIDI to just now then take over that those those 808s if you wanted to. You could do that. Yeah. Yeah. You it's could a do lazy that. man's way to do it. Yeah. However you want to do it. You know, if you want MIDI to play these things or you just want to leave them in the tracks, mm-hmm. you know, at a certain point, it's kind of like, what's the difference? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, that's all a gray area. How much do you want to? You're a good drummer. So you'll kind of want to play the whole thing. I, you know, I kind of err on the side of trying to play everything, even if I'm quote unquote cheating a little bit by layering things or making, you know, making one pad play something that is maybe even a rhythmic phrase or something like mm-hmm. I just want, I just want to take it out of the tracks and I want to play it. Sure. Sure. Um, just cause you know, it's fun for me and, um, that's, I just enjoy no- knowing that I'm playing everything I possibly can live. Definitely. I like to think too, that things you have, have integrity, a- Andrew. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I try. Plus like, you know, things have a bit of a different feel to them when you're actually playing them. So even though something, you know, like if there's like this ankle bell, uh, clap thing like if the the bells were in the track would it sound mostly the same yeah maybe but like if my clap my backbeat feels like a little lazy or a little behind or something it feels you know then that ankle bell is going to be with it you know that's a great point so yeah i just want to play everything live and give it kind of a human feel that's at least, at least that's what i think <coughs> is happening sorry so anyway um here we are our kick is alone here and then we um we got to play where we the third 808 alone, which is what we have. And then we got to play another kick. So we got to go back to after this happens, back to chain one for that last kick. And beware of that diagonal line. We don't want this. Yeah, what would happen if it just, would it gradually seep in the other sound? Um, if you wanted that to happen not it wouldn't sound gradual but like as there's like discrete points where this is where it considers to be hopping up to two Mm -hmm. that's where it crosses that line so you would just get two at that point oh okay you know so i've 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 (coughs) run this many times when like you've got maybe 10 samples and the automation the diagonal lines aren't so clear and you're like why is it changing at a random time when i don't think it is you know that has happened to me. That's so, good to know. There's no diagonals. Right. In, with chain selector automation. Sure, yeah. Of course, if you're automating a reverb, you're automating any kind of effect or whatever, you know. Yeah. Diagonal lines, curved lines. Um, but yeah, chain selector automation, only horizontal. So.
So we are back to this one kick. Actually, all the way until this downbeat. So we want one. No, one. That's right. And then right before the downbeat, we get we go back to our um, chain two. Which is the together. Right, 808 number one with the kick. Cool. So, um, and that's our bar. That's the automation for the whole bar. We can just take this and copy it over. Where's our beat one? There it is. Apple D. Yeah, it doesn't matter what happens at the end, really, but, you know, just for cleanliness sake. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to put that, those things in the MIDI clip and, um, now our KT 10 stuff has to change now because it's, it's cool over here. And then once we get to that second part, we got to put in those notes. Oh, okay. So let's see, we're at nine. And this is just for the MIDI playback, right? Exactly. Okay. So just so that you can audition the part. So we're going when we can just like kind of line it up with um with the part there. You need sixteenth notes. Oh yeah. That's really convenient. It shows that. Yeah. You're like, why didn't I make a <laughs> a more simple bass drum pattern for this? Yeah, right. Oh, this is this is what it is. You know, you're seeing this in real time. Yeah, yeah like, totally. No, I love it. You know, you get it right, and then and then you have your nice like MIDI audition clip. Um, like I said, we're doing a live. All right. I think this is, I think that's right. If it's not, we'll hear it. Now, the last part of this is the fact that in the first part of this, the first or whatever, eight bars of this, we don't have this kick at all. And now our chain two and three have the kick in it. So here's an example of a place where I would, I would use this, you know, oh, okay. we could have, more chains and you know make the 808s like al alone and then have another chain with the duplicate 808 or whatnot but with the kick but you know this kick doesn't have like a tail or anything and there's also like time before the downbeat where like, we can turn it on and it's not gonna like we're not gonna suddenly hear a reverb tail whatever so i'm just gonna have it off for the first half of this um this uh, little loop here. So we're going to turn it on like right there. And now it's just off. It's as simple as just dragging it down means off. Yeah. So okay. you can see like in the automation, um, in the automation lane, this is the lane. This is like the main track. I prefer to just like hide that and only look at one. Mm -hmm. It shows you like what the value is on the line. So this is chain select automation down here. Mm -hmm. And you say it's four, two, you know, three, like whatever the value is. Mm -hmm. This is just off on. So now it should work. Let's see what this sounds like. Obviously I didn't do the hi hat. Cool. So we just gotta duplicate that over. Um our two bars. Bars nine and ten, we can just duplicate Apple D. Close. Oh, almost there. Real close. I think we grabbed, we didn't grab quite enough. I think that's it.
Great. Sweet. And um, continuing on, we could do the hi hats if we want. Yeah, I'm sure that's. I mean, it's the same process. So. Right. Same process. Just yeah. mirror the MIDI in this clip. Mm-hmm. Um, last thing I'll show is how you would actually tr- use this for an entire show where each song is going to have its own samples generally. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes not, but pretty much always in modern production, each song has its own set of samples. So we can do the same thing. Apple G with the entire drum rack. Um, and it creates an instrument rack with this drum rack nested in it. So if I rename this to uh, whatever the song title is in this case, little beat it actually renames the chain I pause and say how amazing that name is oh yeah it's, it's you know it's genius. it's perfect I'll be genius <laughs> um it renames the chain that it's in so we can apple d duplicate this chain for all our different songs and now you have all your drum racks oh okay um for all your different songs and you know song two is obviously a little beat too it's 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 the second coming yeah. right naturally or like whatever your songs are called you know song four. four. Oh, so okay and wow. then we can do the same chain selector automation there for all your different songs so now this is like now that chain selector is representing that entire drum rack right not just the pad right exactly and i might name this like this is the master instrument rack so like it i might name the it. coolest or you know something or that too yeah i mean even no, songs song. is good too right or like drum racks like to just yeah show that it's all this instrument rack is everything all the different ones um and then same thing automate this chain selector and also all the on off buttons so that they're only on during their individual songs um you Sweet. Know. and that's that's about it. That's the overview. And real real quick, um, how would you then? So say you have you just you just did this, and then you have an SPDSX. Um, yep. How would you then uh, set up to make it where it actually functions? Or not? Maybe not even SPDSX, but how do you then um, push the outs to where, or set up the outs to where it would go to the TM2 that would then go to your pads? Right. So um, that's going to be over here in the in your sort of MIDI I/O. Now, everybody's situation here is going to be different mm-hmm. and you kind of have to like, you know, plug your device in and like make sure it works. Okay. Um, again, I've done a lot of this sort of automation like on planes and stuff and then you just got to like connect your device. Um, but right now I don't have any devices connected, so I don't have the option. If sure. you had an SPDSX plugged in here via USB, it would come up and you would select the SPD. I could select the computer keyboard actually and play this MIDI with the keyboard. Yeah, let's do that. Um, let's see. I think my computer keyboard is not gonna like have the correct notes, but I, I have to go in Ableton. I got to go over here, and this is the um, what allows the computer keyboard to to send MIDI. So um, now the drum rack. If I change the monitor, in the drum rack's getting MIDI from my keyboard if I select this chain select that so now you can see that my keyboard is playing these okay cool these things obviously there's nothing on them it's not Mm -hmm. the correct things but actually this is a nice thing like if I want to audition stuff if I'm on a plane and I want to audition things I can just drag the pad to whatever one my keyboard is sending you know I could drag it over there you know super easy Cool. Um, where was I? Okay, so when you're when you select your SPD, then you have, you know, you can take MIDI on all channels, or you can choose a channel. I think the SPD by default is like channel five. It sends on channel five, which you can change in the in the unit. Um, all channels would be fine if you only have one MIDI device plugged in, but it's good practice to just set it to the channel that you that you're actually sending it on. Okay. Um, and then you can, you know, send it to whatever output you're going to use. In this case, it's sending to the group because it's within this drums group. If I took it out of this group, whenever it's, you know, ready to go, 
now it's going to the master. And if you have an interface and you're, you've got 10 outputs or 12 outputs or whatever, um, right now I only have two, but um, you could just set it to whichever output that would be. Great. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it, man. Oh, my pleasure.